<clears throat> Yo, what's up? It's AAP Dino, and I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Best. I thought we should be suckers. Fuck your friend, I ain't using a rubber. Scoop another bag, bitch. Drop a dime, pick up another. Bye. All right, so we got AAP Dino jumping off the porch with us today. Hey, yes, sir. And how you feeling today, man? Blessed. Blessed to be here, for sure. Yeah. Blessed. Nah, I appreciate you coming by today, yeah, too, man. Nah, yeah. Sure. So first off, just go ahead and introduce who's sitting next to you too, man. This is my manager, Dumbo, Barry Vision Entertainment. There it is. Part owner. Okay. So what else you got shaking here in Atlanta during this trip, man? What else you got planned? Just doing interviews, working, grinding from the mud, you know, trying to uh, get in everybody's face, really. Okay. Yeah. How do you like the vibes here in Atlanta, and how does it compare to back at home in Texas? Uh, Atlanta, cool. It's similar to Texas almost. The weather different, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but it's similar in certain ways. Yeah. For sure, I like Atlanta a little bit. Okay. And you live out in L.A. now, right? Yeah, I've been staying in L.A. for like four years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's take it back, though, to Arlington, man. So probably had a handful of rappers from Arlington sit on the porch. But yeah. for people unfamiliar, just kind of talk about, like, the culture. What, what's life like out there? Shit, man? Arlington, it's a, it's a, it's the everybody look at it like the suburbs. But hmm. I'm pretty sure if you've seen the people that sit on the porch, you're looking like, it's from, uh, yeah, you get what I'm like saying? So suburbs, yeah. now it's like everybody on Arlington because oh, it's dying, people dying, kids out there dying, and that shouldn't be the case. You get what I'm saying? Like, it shouldn't take that. Uh, it's going, it's lit in Arlington for niggas to be like, oh yeah, from the ag. So I come at it a different way. I come at it approaching like, I'm from Arlington. I'm standing on there from the south side of Arlington or the Cowboys Stadium at. Okay. No, we just a little pass down the highway to the right. So you got the east side, you got the north side, it's like close to Fort Worth, then you got the south side. So Arlington, is, it's a cool area, you get what I'm saying? Arlington, anything can happen anywhere, you get what I'm saying? So Arlington, one of them cities, for sure. Do you feel like the south side's different from the, must, the rest of the city, or is it pretty much all the same it's stuff? It's all the same to me, really. I be everywhere all, all over Arlington, but the north side is for sure the worst part, because it's mm. where like most of the Section 8 is, you know okay. what I'm saying? The east side, too, the east side, the south side more cool, like, we get more, I ain't got on this no niggas, but we do get money. We get money on the south side, for sure. Yeah. So. Do you feel like people outside of Texas try and lump you guys into Dallas and Fort Worth then? If all the time. You got a lot of people who come from Arlington that don't say it because they feel the shame or they don't want to be like, oh, yeah, I'm from Arlington. They are, I'm from Dallas because they feel like nobody know Arlington. You know what I'm saying? So I was like that at first when I first started rapping. I was like, I'm from DFW. And you know what I'm saying? Then they were like, nah, nigga, you from Arlington. Like, so I started standing on it more. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people don't even know where Arlington is. They know, nah, I'm telling you, I've been meeting people. They be like, yeah, I know Arlington. I know da da da. I okay. Because the Cowboys for sure probably. But true, true. They, they more people. It, been, it shocked me every time somebody was like, oh yeah, I know where Arlington is. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, for sure. So, like, take it back to your childhood. What were you into as a kid growing up out there then? Uh, I was into everything: riding four wheelers, dirt bikes, fighting, playing basketball. I was just a kid. I grew up. With, uh, with my daddy and my mama. They were separated, but it was two different worlds. My mama was into church, my daddy was into other things. You know what I'm saying? So I got the best of both sides. When I'm with my mama, I'm chilling. You know, I ain't really doing too much. When I'm with my daddy, I'm in the hood. My daddy from Dowerth, Texas. So when I be with my daddy, I should be in the hood. For sure, most of the time. Okay. When would you say you jumped off the porch then? How old are you? Uh, I jumped out of Porch High School, like, probably by my sophomore year. I had my first, like, $30,000, $40,000, oh, for sure. Ran it up. By my junior year, I was driving the SRTA Challenger. My senior year, I was buying the whole cafeteria food. That's facts. <laughs> for sure. So everyone fucked with you back then, Yeah, huh? everybody fucked with me, from the older to kids. Still, they're still in high school, still fucking me. I pull up, give them shoes, I hoop, take out my shoes, give them to people. So uh -huh. it's like... I always had a, my face card meant everything. Like everybody knew my face for sure. Everybody still know my face to this day. Yeah, for sure. Did you finish school? Did you go to college? I ain't go to college, but I finished high school for sure. Okay. I ain't, I I, can, I I I paid my own way into college for like two weeks. Then I was like, yeah, this ain't for me. <laughs> the, the professor, I swear to God, true story. He was like, if you think you can come to the class and take notes and pass, it's the wrong class for you. You need to listen. I did not come back. He <laughs> didn't come back I didn't after come that. Back at all. <laughs> But I tried it just because people, everybody was like, you need to go do something, you need to go yeah. do something, and you know what I'm saying? So I still ain't do nothing. Then that's when I got into rap. My daddy put a studio in the house, like, because I was getting in trouble bad. Like, 
like crazy stuff. So mm -hmm. he was just like, I need to keep you in the house. Like, you know, he don't want nothing bad to happen to me outside or get killed or nothing. So he put a studio in the crib and that's where we was at. That's when I started perfecting my craft. And I really was doing it for us, making music for us, really. So you didn't really plan on being a rapper then, huh? Nah, not at all. I just looked like one. Like I said, I was driving a Porsche on Forgiato, so <laughs> pulling up on the rappers, like, you know what I'm saying? When I first started rapping, niggas charged me like $110 an hour. Like, I was paying $100 they an hour. They were trying to tax you, huh? Yeah, they taxing me, like, for sure. Beats, I was paying for beats up front. Like, I paid one dude like $500 for three beats. I didn't even use them. But it's just like, all that, is, I went through the motions, for sure, mm -hmm. in here, for sure. Who'd you grow up listening to? Like, who were some of your favorite artists? Uh, I could listen to everybody. Like, my pops was big on UGK, uh, A-Ball MJG, from Otis Red and the Sam Cooke. Mama was into uh, Smokey Norfolk and Gospel. So mm. I got best of both worlds. My mama lead the queen, uh, I said the queen, she lead the uh, youth choir. Okay. So it's like, I couldn't do that neither. I was in the youth choir for like, probably like a month. That was it, huh? Yeah, I was a tender. And my voice was real high. I just played the background. I mean, for sure. So did it take long for you to like fall in love with making music to be like, all right, this is something I actually want to do. My now. circumstances made me fall in love with music. Like, uh, some happened, they took my pops, they took all my, they took everything. The phase came, uh, they took everything from us. So it was like a restart in life. And that's when I met Bird. I had paid like 15, I got taxed to get on Worldstar. I paid to get on Worldstar. I shot a little video, his son, Avion, was playing the song. Like, uh, then he ended up calling me. Then I was in a Porsche too. I'm in a Porsche, he called me. First he hit me on Instagram, I'm like, this nigga ain't real. He got 2,000 followers, you know what I'm saying? He told me, I managed Roddy Rich. I'm like, you gotta understand what my <laughs> mind was for real. Like, I didn't care about that. Like, yeah. he called me, I showed him 60,000 in the car, bird. Yeah. I showed him 60 bands on the phone. And he was like, oh, he showed me. I ain't never been to Rolls Royce at the time. But I seen them, and you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, that ain't Rafe. Like, eh. like, he for sure somebody. But after that, we stayed connected a little bit. Then the situation happened. The raid happened. Then, uh, like, a, a day later, probably, I called him and showed him it's real. Like, you know, like, I, I made music and stuff, but I want to be serious about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I kept it all the way stuck with him. Then he flew me back. Then mm -hmm. now I'm here. Like, it's, it happened. I ain't going to say it happened fast, but three years, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Bliss. How would you describe that transition going out to LA then? Different, like I say it all the time. You'll get confused by the palm trees in LA, especially being what I am and how I look, you know what I'm saying? I'm 150 pounds and I wear 50,000 in jewelry all the time just because in Texas, I was a certain way. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, LA is a different ball game. Nobody gives a fuck. Like, nigga, I really walk up to you, take that off. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's certain things you gotta be molded to survive in LA. Like. I, I feel like that. You got to be molded a certain way, or you got to have some OGs and a good, like, I got good people around me that, that hey, nah, we ain't going here. We ain't, they steer me in the right direction. Now, I ain't going to tell you, I've been in Compton for sure. I've been in Watts. Like, I done been everywhere, but I move a certain way. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. So how important would you say it is to have someone like that on your team, man? It's, 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 how you, it's how you survive, I feel like. Like, you can have people around you, but... LA is a different ball game for real. If you ain't really tapped in to the point where, especially you trying to rap and make music, being from somewhere else, if you're not from there, mm -hmm. you gotta be tapped in somewhere. Like, you can't, it ain't just willy dilly where you just running around, off and go do shows, you will get followed home. Like, that's facts. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I feel like people wanna be super macho. I ain't never been no macho type of guy. Like, I'm in here for one reason. I need, I need that bag, I need to get my mama up away from that, you know what I'm saying? I ain't uh, being my show, my mama in a 10,000 square foot house. Like, that's my show, that's yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't trying to be the toughest, everybody out there tough. So it's like, if you go out there being tough, you gonna get that, that's what, that's what LA is. You going out there, that's anywhere. You go out there tough, you gonna get what you, what you asking for, for sure. Nah, for real. So how would you describe your transition going from the streets to the music industry? And hard. is there any comparison between I the battle two? with it every day. Like sitting and doing this interview is hard. Like what I say, what I don't say, how I approach it, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's a learning process every day with me, for sure. Because it's like, I still got that mentality. Like I ain't walking up and hey, what's up, bro? I really sat in front of Travis Scott and had a 40 minute conversation with him. You know what I'm saying? Take no pictures. We talked about Texas for like 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure if I, he walk in this door right now, he'd be like, oh, what's up, what's up, Dino, what's up? Because it's, it's genuine, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never been that 
type of guy. But I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't have that. Like, if I would have got in front of him and maybe did that, I probably would have blew up a year ago, a year and a half ago. You know what I'm saying? But I don't even think about that. Like, oh, I would have. I got a song with NBA Youngboy I never released because I got ran on it. They were like, you tripping, release it. I'm like, I'm not releasing that just because I got into the art more of the music. You know what I'm saying? To the point where it's like, it ain't about the clout. It ain't about getting on. It's about staying. It's about being solidified. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to be solidified in this game. You know what I'm saying? Just because my mindset and the hunger and what I strive to be. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I fuck with that, man. I appreciate it. So what's your creative process like? Do you be writing? Do you punch in? Do a little bit of both? Or? Punch in? all the time uh, uh it's a life experiences you know what i'm saying and i got molded into that i used to write music i used to be in my notes writing and you know what i'm saying i'm trying to get back into it more because i want to get more i want to get more on the lyricist part but i just go off of my life you know what i'm saying like that's how most of my songs come just living and just being a part of everything bird and they show me a lot of different things you know what i'm saying i've been around niggas with 10 40 point of chains millions in jury you know what i'm saying so it's like I want it. So it's like, all that was just like a growing process. I could have easily probably been on something else, like I'm a steal or I'm a, but where is that honestly gonna get me? I done been able to steal 100 bands before and I ain't touch it. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm here. If I would have stole that 100 bands, I probably wouldn't be here. That might, like, no, I need to You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. When do you feel like you make your best music then? Is it like when you're going through some real life shit, when you're in a good mood, when you're pissed off, or which one would you say? Uh, all of them. Like, like I go with the motions. Like I really want to record right now just because I got a lot going on, you know? So it's like, it's really like a therapy to me. It's my way of venting. But when I'm having fun, I'm having fun. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I'm having fun, it's fun for sure. I love being in the studio. Like, a lot. I do eight, I do 12 hour sessions. Like, I'm oh, in an eight to eight. I might do eight songs for real. One day I might do two, and the two might be a banger. You know what I'm saying? So it's just all on, it's all on me and how my mind is. You know what I'm saying? As long as I keep my mind clear, something's going to come out. So that's what I battle with the most, just keeping my mind clear and staying focused on what I need to be focused on, for sure. Yeah, no, that's real. What's your thoughts on the rap game, the music industry, everything that'll be going on right now? The music, the music industry, I feel like you gotta take it for what it is. Like I learn with the music, music industry every day. Don't take nothing personal. They tell me that every day. Don't take nothing personal, cause it's easy for you to take something personal. I done been in front of A and R's and told them this same story, and you telling me you from the street, so I'm thinking, oh, I got this in the bag. Like he from that, he feel what I'm feeling, and they ain't move nothing, they ain't push no button, and, and I'm broke. You know what I'm saying? And it just looked like this, but at the time I was broke. You know what I'm saying? Trying to chase a rap dream and telling people my story and nothing moves. So it's like, I used to be mad. Like, nigga, I see him and trip. Like, I don't care who it is though, just the fact that I feel like man, playing with my life, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't got enough followers or I ain't, you like the music, but oh, he don't got no followers, man. Like, he got, make me some followers. Back in the day, they ain't have followers, they didn't even have Instagram. <laughs> they didn't even need that. You shit. get what I'm saying? But now it's what it is. So you gotta, you gotta, you can't take nothing personal in this. So you start taking things personal, that's when it, it, you only gonna go, go so high. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, for sure. So you got this new single, yeah. Wishing, featuring yeah, Be Love, love. just dropped, man. Yeah. So just talk about how that whole song came about for you. Uh, being challenged. They was like, get on this type of beat. You need to be on this. And I'm, I'm, I take challenges all day. So it's like, I got on the beat and that came out. And everybody like, it's hard, it's hard. We gotta get it clear, let's call Ray J. I gotta put somebody on it. Dino, who you want on it? Then we just started having to be connected with Be Love, and it just came that way, and it ended up being genuine. I shot part of it in LA, then we went to Miami and met Be Love, and then shot okay. the second part. Yeah, no, 20K cool. and Louis Knows. So, yeah. You feel like that's gonna be a new direction for your sound, or was that just something that you were kind of It's something I was just playing with. You know what I'm saying? I don't, my sound is not a specific sound. Like, I, 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 I really put in my mind that I wanna hit every genre if I can. You know what I'm saying? So. That's really what I be on. Like I like challenges for sure. And then come here with a country beat, and if I like it enough, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> but sure, depending on how I'm feeling, like I'm gonna do it. Or I'm gonna save it and do it later when I'm in, when I'm motivated enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure. No, I dig that. All right, you got the new project, Super Dave. Yeah. Who is Super Dave? That's my pops. The whole project dedicated to him. I made the project like three years ago, like when everything was going on. I recorded uh, a lot of them songs in my house, like where everything happened. So. It was a different feeling. Like, I wasn't even trying to release Super Dave. Really? Uh, no, uh, just because it was that in, it was that personal to me. It was that deep. You know what I'm saying? But that was like, nah. You gotta let everybody feel the story. Like I told you, everybody I told the story a thousand times, and 
nobody, you know what I'm saying? But they wait for the platform to come. Then it's like, it is a lot of people that want to hear that story. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's another me somewhere out here that's going to be like, damn, like, he did it, I can do it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do it for Super Dave. I don't do it for me. I do it for that type of shit. That's what keep me going. Like, I, I ain't see myself here. I used to watch this shit on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all emotions happening. And it's like, and you believe in it. Like, I put 100% into it, for sure. Like, yeah. For sure. Were you at the house when it got raided? Yeah, I was. Like, the whole situation I was there. Like, me and my daddy was best friends, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's still, it's an open case, you know what I'm saying? So I really don't speak too much on it. Yeah. And uh, still fighting to get him free, you know what I'm saying? Because it was a crazy situation, how everything happened. It's unfair, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I put it out, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of unfair situations that got people in, incarcerated for a long time. He been in there four years, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing. So it's like, now, this is, when my platform comes, this is what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I want to get that M so I can drop it off on a lawyer. Yeah. You know? So it's like, that's what I'm on. I'm on that type of time for sure. They keep me going every day. How proud is he of everything that you've accomplished these past three years? Of? He's cool. He, he, he proud for sure, but he can't see it. You know what I'm saying? And he, it's Texas. Texas is horrible. Like, he don't got no FaceTime. I can't FaceTime. I can't talk to him like that. I talk to him 15 minutes a day. You know what I'm saying? So the situation real fucked up. And this is somebody I was with every day. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, he can't even see. That's why I be so big on getting my music through Securus and letting it be heard through the jails because that's where I go. I ain't into the gimmicks. I ain't into the, I really don't give a fuck about none of this, but I do it for that. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, that's my passion. Music my passion too, but I know me being true to myself is gonna get me further than anything. You know what I'm saying? So I, I stand on what I say like when it comes to that. You know what I'm saying? For sure. What type of emotions did you go through while recording the project, considering it was so personal? But some songs I cried on. Like, I couldn't even make certain songs. Super Dave, the, the song Super Dave, mm -hmm. I cried on that song because it was like, it was hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was just me and my boy Zan in there. Like, I told you it was in the crib, it was just me and him. And it's like, I know I tried to do it. Like, I used to rap about other things. That's when I started getting into my life more. Like, I gotta rap about Super Dave. I gotta talk about it. Like. You know what I'm saying? So it was a learning experience. Then I was talking about it a certain way, then I moved to LA and I got taught how to talk about it. So it's a difference. Like you can talk about it, but <laughs> where, where, where's that? you know what I'm saying? It could take you a lot of ways. I could say the wrong thing and boom. You know what I'm saying? I got taught to talk about my situation. I got taught how to, how to, how to react to certain conversations, certain interviews, you know what I'm saying? Cause it easily can go left. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I shine light on things that need to be shined on. You know what I'm saying? So for sure. I feel that. You got a song with Boozy and Tootie on yeah. there. How did that come about? Uh, my whole management situation. I made the song Lamb Truck. We was in Miami shooting a video in Lamb Trucks, shooting another video. Then I came back, Sean Brown played the beat, and that's what came out. I'm stacking up for Lamb Truck. Then, cause I'm telling you, I was in them. I'm like, damn, this is a different one. I ain't know it was a cheap, I ain't know it was a cheap Lamb Truck. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, oh, it's cheap ones. I'm in a real one. So I'm like, I gotta get one. Just cause I ain't never seen no nigga in Arlington with one, but an athlete. So it's like, even if I don't drive it, I'm gonna get one, just cause, like, I don't know, like, and I seen it, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that song came that way then with his son and Boosie, me and Bird was talking, like, it's, it's, if, I was, if I was rapping and my pops was rapping, I would wanna be a Boosie and Tootie. I would want the, the, that collab to, to mean something, like, you know what I'm saying? That song is, is, is for sure a personal song too, even cause it's like, damn, I'm the first one with a Boosie and a Tootie around, like, you know I was going to say, I don't think they even they have a song they together. They don't have a song like together. But, and, it, and it wasn't because, oh, I'm doing it because oh, I'm the first one with Boosie and Tootie Rock. It's, it's, a bigger, it's a bigger thing. Like, nigga, Boosie and his son, like, that's different. Like, I wish I could have did something with my pops. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I wish I could have. I wish we would have had more videos. And more, I don't got a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? I got certain pictures. But he was never that type of guy. You know what I'm saying? But I was a son. I could have made him any type of way I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. I lived through that, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's, what, that's what a nigga lived through, for sure. Yeah. And what about the single Permanent Angels that you had put out? Permanent Angels, that's for sure. I thought that song was gonna be big. Like when I, when I, that song for sure, I feel that, that that's probably one of my favorite songs, still top five. Permanent Angels is because it's so real. Like that song, and I went back home and shot it, you know what I'm saying? With my grandma, with my family, showing them that. Like, it's real, I got a real production video, I'm shooting on the red, like, they don't know what it is, but mama, this is a $40,000 camera, like, so it's like, for her to see this and see the growth and see me really passionate about something, that was a different thing, like, that, that made me, you know what I'm saying, but I always been big on it, like, I, I was so passionate about it, and when it don't go up, I take it down, or I don't post it, I get insecure about it, because it's like, I'm really putting 
You get what I'm saying? And niggas ain't feeling it. But it's like, I got to talk. You make niggas feel it. Get in an interview and say, like, you know what I'm saying? Speak your mind. Like, I'm always quiet. I don't really talk. I, I ain't quiet around my people, but when it comes to interviews, it's, it's fast. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It ain't too deep. And you know what I'm saying? Before, but now I'm picking up the pace. Like, because I done met somebody who done been in the same scenarios and who wished they could have had a chance. You know what I'm saying? My cousin on my body was big into music. You know what I'm saying? And he ain't here no more. So I live through him. You know what I'm saying? I keep that all that my motivation. All that negative, I don't need, sometimes you'll see my mindset negative, I go in the studio and I release it, you know what I'm saying? My negative come out through my music. I don't just dwell on the past or dwell on the negative situations. Like, I know I can fix my negative. Can't bring nobody back alive, but I can put the biggest fucking headstone on his, you know what I'm saying? If I want to, I can move him and put my whole family together. So that's the type of time I really be on. Like, <laughs> I really be on another type of time just because it's like, I got a lot of people who can't, you know what I'm saying? So. That's that's what I really, that's my, that's my motivation for sure. Nah, I fuck with that, man. Yeah. So what's some goals you got set for yourself for the next year or two? That's I gotta hit the billboard. Like that's that's my that's my goal. After that, it's 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 open season. Like I'm just gonna go. I know I'm gonna go crazy, but once I hit that chart, I feel like everybody gonna take it serious. Like all the people, you know what I'm saying? That's not I'm not doing it for that neither. But it's like. I got to show it, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to just be big in Texas or LA. I don't want to get a million views on YouTube. I want to chart, you know? So it's like, my aspiration, my goals was, it, it became bigger and different. Like I said, as I came to LA and moved around certain things, I didn't know about charting and, you know what I'm saying? Until I seen a nigga go diamond yeah. and <laughs> next to him and, and throw me a million in the bag. Like, you understand all the money I seen with 10, five, 20, like, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's where we come from. I seen straight from the bank. Like, that's a different feeling. Like, and that's in music. You, five years ago, you couldn't tell me that it was money in music. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I done seen it. Like, <laughs> I done seen a lot of it. I done seen it was a million dollar chain. So it's like, I want it. Like, that's all I did. I ain't, I ain't want what another, it's not because I wanted what he got or I, I want it for myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go get it for myself. No handouts. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For sure. What's some advice you would share to the youth coming up right now? Uh, to the youth coming up in music, put 100% in it. Like, you got to believe in it. When you believe in it, you're going to make somebody else believe. Or if you got somebody believing in it, go with them, because everybody ain't going to believe. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when that door open up for you, go through it, because those ain't opening up for a lot of people. Like, I just found out it was like 60,000 or like 100,000 songs being released a day. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. at the end of the week, it's 700,000. And if you got one person that's, that's like, I invest or I go with them and just see. You know what I'm saying? It, it's nothing wrong with it. Like, before, I was like, I, I used to, like, I could have easily been like, I got left on tour before. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got left. Every, I'm in LA. Everybody left me. You know what I'm saying? So I could have easily been like, man, fuck niggas and like, niggas don't care about me and went back to Texas and worked at a, I really was on that time. Like, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Or find a way, sleep on the couch bunk sleep somewhere and that's what i did i was on the couch holding bags waking up early trying to get another nigga bag just because i know like this this opportunity ain't gonna come again like i done had a lot of opportunities passing you know what i'm saying i done had a lot of places that a lot of times i feel like i shouldn't be here you know what i'm saying so it's like how many times do you get them chances how many times are you gonna get them chances you know what i'm saying so it's like i went with it i went i listened i i, I learned to listen you know what i'm saying i learned that i ain't right I ain't always gonna be right, you know what I'm saying? But know what you want, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when I first met Bird, that I mean, nigga was like, some, 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 I'm like, man, I'ma blow. He was like, hey, like, you gotta worry for it. Your music is like this, like, you gotta, it's real, you know what I'm saying? He kept it real with a nigga. So it was like, nigga talking about music like this until I got into seeing people record. And I'm like, every four bars, I need to switch it. Every three bars, I need to switch it. I need to talk about different contents. Like, what is this? What is that? I need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is a, a, a tussie? So I actually went. You know what I'm saying? Actually experiencing life, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, every, all, all the young people out there, whoever rapping, like, experience your life, talk about, it, uh, talk about it in a certain way and put 100% in it, like, you know what I'm saying? Know that if I do this beat, how much he gonna want? Know when, if I shoot this video, he gonna try to keep it, he gonna release it? No, you know what I'm saying? No, or it's cool not to know, but not, at least knowing where you're going, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me, I was just blessed, like, honestly, like, 
everything happened to me out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So I just took it for what it is. I can't keep letting doors close. You know what I'm saying? I said no to uh, NBA Youngboy manager. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, then I, when after everything happened, I'm like, damn, I, I could have been a rapper. Like, then a bird came. It's God. You know what I'm saying? That don't happen to everybody. So it's like, I, I went with it. You know what I'm saying? I showed myself, approved myself. You know what I'm saying? I earned it. I earned to be here. It's when given. You know what I'm saying? I earned the investment in me. You know, so it's like, you gotta want something, you gotta earn something. Yeah, if, it's, if it's given, don't take it because they want something in return. Ain't nobody doing nothing for free. Like, especially not in this. And especially you got a whole bunch of chains on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I pawned a Rolex and flew to LA and went broke again. But I kept it a stack. Like, hey, man, I can't do this because the police outside my house. But I wanna make music. I'm serious about it. I stayed in the studio every day to the point of niggas like, damn, Dino sound crazy right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I started really passing other motherfuckers up. Like, and I wouldn't release it. I'm just in the studio working on my craft, believing in my craft. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all that play a part. If you ain't got no studio, find a home studio. You, you know, it's just like, how bad you want it at the end of the day. You gotta you got sacrifice something. I sacrificed a lot. I sacrificed my mama. My mama's sick right now. And look where I'm at in LA, in Atlanta. Chasing a dream, cause I know at the end of the day, I'm gonna be able to get that bag to get you certain treatments. I'm gonna be able to do certain things. So it's like, like you gotta find what motivates you for sure. You know what I'm saying? You find what motivates you, and what's driving you. You gonna be good, even if it's not music. It could be a clothing stuff. You know what I'm saying? But you put it in. Like every time every nigga walk by, I gotta make twenty dollars, at least twenty five, just because my mama need that twenty five dollars. Care about me. My little brother need that twenty five dollars. So it's like. That's how I try to hustle, you know what I'm saying? I go broke again, spending it all on something I believe in. You know, like, if, if, this, if nothing go up, we're going to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep going until something shake for sure. I ain't giving up because I ain't only put that in the air. Like, that don't even cross my mind. Like, nah, it's over. Now, before, yes. Now, you can't, you know what I'm saying? I take it for what it is, like, for sure. Real shit, man. No, you got the right mindset for it. I definitely. appreciate it, for yeah. sure. All right, you got any shout outs you'd like to give before we wrap it up here? Uh, I want to shout out the whole AAP. You know, that's the game. That's my label. I want to shout out Bird Vision, Bird Dumbo, my whole management team, for sure. That's how I'm here. I thought we should be suckers. Fucking your friend, I ain't using a rubber. Scoop another bad bitch. Drop a down, pick up another. Buy a plane, Jane. Bust it down, put that.